Hello, hello, dear Kardec Radio listeners. Uh, this is Marco Magandaris, and we're here with you guys tonight uh, one more time, continuing this journey that we're going through, the Illuminated Prayers, right? And this is another beautiful night where all of us together are going to have a chance to discuss, to listen, to talk about another very, very interesting prayer with a lot of content, a lot of love, a lot of good energies, and that we're going to talk about today. So for all of you that are joining us tonight, welcome. Thank you for being here with us. And we'll continue here where our beautiful friend Carol left uh, yesterday, continuing the book in the greater world. And today we're going to focus on chapter number 20 and the prayer containing this chapter. Okay. So let us ask our Master Jesus and our Father, Mother God, to bless at this moment, allow us to have this uh, moment together of learning of exchanging experiences and learning with Andrea Louise in, through the mediumship of Chico Xavier. So, the, the chapter 20 of this book, it's the end of the journey. And again, we're talking like this, this is the little tail end of the book again, just like we did a couple of days ago. But before we go there, I just want to do a little recap of the book itself. We're only focusing on two chapters of this particular book, right? Um, and um, in this particular book, uh, as you guys will uh, remember from the great explanation uh, summary that uh, uh, Carl did yesterday, it describes uh, the spiritual causes of a lot of mental illnesses. And these mental illnesses include, for example, uh, schizophrenia, epilepsy, phobias, fixed ideas. So a lot of a lot of our brothers and sisters that, um, hey, hello, John. Hi, I'm here. It's nice to see you here. Thank you for joining us. So the book will, will go through this uh, very intricate relationship between manifestations of mental illnesses. Um, from a spiritual perspective, and we'll go through some uh, uh, cases and uh, through this mission of learning and helping other spirits, uh, we're gonna learn a lot about uh, that, um, that interaction. Now, there are many new concepts that this book is gonna bring, uh, and I think that's very interesting just to give you an idea of the, uh, through the prayer that we're gonna study in a minute, but uh, it, it, it describes um, our uh, thought process in our brains and our consciousness as this mental house with two different floors, where the lower floors associated with um, our histories, our past experiences. The middle floor will be what we're going through now and the preparations that we're doing. And the third floor will be the connection to the high and above. And it, this is a, a new concept that is brought by Andrea Luis in this particular book. And also it's important in the forward part of the book where Carol uh, beautifully explained to us yesterday, uh, it describes that, you know, uh, Emmanuel in the, in, the, in the forward book uh, describes how we are all blossoming, like we're all open ourselves to this new experiences, this new learning to letting go a lot of things that we're still carrying it uh, today. And I read today a very interesting passage, um, and this is on chapter number 32, the Our Daily Bread by Emmanuel. And in this uh, part of uh, Daily Bread, Emmanuel talks about the corpses. And I know I was reading and studying this at the Holy Spirit Society today, and looking at the imagery that Emmanuel describes that uh, uh, that we sometimes carry, like, you know, inside who we are, we carry this toxic ideas, 
where in the imagery that was described in that part, it will just like, it's almost like a, a corpses that we carry inside us, which represents a lot of things that we've, uh, we're still hanging into, right? So our old ideas, the old me that still has a lot of this embedded uh, selfishness and, and many other of the vices that are still so compacted inside of us. And it talks about the fact that when we carry this inside us, right, we need to find way, we need to find ways to let in this go, right? To open in the doors and let the renovation start. Otherwise, we're gonna be attracting more and more and more of that, right? So prayers can help, right? We're gonna be talking about that today. But most importantly, what Emmanuel wanted to bring to us, if we continue cultivating that inside of us, we'll be responsible for the consequences, right? It's time for us to you know, continue this awakening of the soul, right? Opening ourselves up for new energies, right? To receiving, to being helped, right? To continue this beautiful journey that we are uh, now, the journey of evolution, right? That we're talking about today. And, uh, the goal here of this under, a mission by Andrea Louise is to bring aid to those who are dealing with the mental illnesses. Now, as Carol presented yesterday, think about this. Now, we are now going through in our society a very critical time where mental illnesses are on the rise. And because of certain things we still do, for example, certain addictions and you know, medications and and all sorts of things, it, it's not helping, right? Because it's 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 increasing, right? The risks, right, of us uh, having several other uh, complications regarding mental illness, right? So it's a very serious, serious problem. Right? You, not only that, but we have depression, we have addictions. All together, we're right now at this moment living probably the apex of that manifestation of those problems in our society. And if we don't do something now, things will get worse. And that will certainly be uh, another bigger challenge in the years to come. Now, this book that we're talking about today was written many years ago. And clearly here, Andrea Luis is ahead of its time, right? Because he's starting to bring concepts to us that are so useful in helping individuals going through uh, these mental illnesses and challenges. And now, only now, we're able to understand what Andrea Luis was really talking about when the, first, when the book was first published, okay? So this is beautiful to see how the spirituality is giving us the resources needed to make a difference, to change things with information, right? Knowledge, so important, right, my friends? Think about this, how important it is for us to know, have access to information, to freely discuss it, right? And to implement things. That is, that is exactly what Jesus wants from us. And that's exactly what Spiritism is providing to us, providing us the resources we need so we can make free conscious decisions that will certainly show the maturity of our evolution, right, with time. Hello, Saul. Hi, very nice to see you. Thank you for joining us, okay? So it is just a, another beautiful way of showing how this is all together helping us, right? Now, as, um, as uh, you know, Carol also discussed yesterday, so Andre Luis is going to this mission and he's meeting with uh, his, the instructor, Zebu in this case, and uh, Calderado, which is he's a specialized spirit in missions to surface, right? He also uh, is joined in this uh, book by Cipriana. Cipriana is a very elevated spirit who works directly with Calderado, and all of them together will will go into this uh, week long mission of uh, helping others. Very interesting this book too, and I really ask you. If you have a chance to 
you know, read it again if you read it before, just go through that again, just because the topic's so important for us nowadays. Um, and just go through it and read it again. It's a great book. But also it's important here that Andrea Louise will, will, will actually meet Claudio, which um, was his uh, demented grandfather, entangled in, in darkness. Uh, he finds them in very, very lower levels um, with a lot of difficulties associated to uh, um, connections to material possessions and money and things that were lived many years ago, over 40 years ago from the time of the history. And again, that brings another layer of discussion in the book because Andrea Louise himself will have moments where he will think about it and he he will expose his own uh, uh, challenges, understanding what's happening, how he can help and and and, and putting it all uh, you know, putting that all together, right? So that's quite uh, that's quite interesting. And another interesting aspect is that Claudio, his uh, grandfather, will be uh, helped in the book. And I'm not going to tell you how it ends, but he's going to be helped um, uh, by Cipriano in the end, and and the rescue uh, outpost by by by, by Cipriano. So it's just another. Uh, very, very interesting. Yes, so that's absolutely true. They're awesome. And you know, the most important thing about it, and I think particularly is this, every time I read those books, I have a completely new horizon that opens in front of me. And even now that I'm reading the books again for the, for this particular study, it's just like every every chapter, every page, we start to pick up things that probably we we missed the first time and it's uh, and it's wonderful because then you can look at uh, layers and layers and layers that you keep opening and exploring from each one of those missions each one of those rescues each one of the characters that have all of them are extremely complex and well detailed um, individuals who will contribute to our own understanding right of what's of what's happened. So you're absolutely right. I think there's a lot of information there, right? Um, and in the book Living Spring, Emmanuel, as Carol also mentioned yesterday, so Carol and I are really well connected. You can see that. Um, so Carol also mentioned that words are living creations of our thoughts, right? So. Um, this uh, it's important for us to understand that every time we think there's a little current that is formed and the words that come from our mouth they take shape and form they carry the same energy that we have in our spiritual minds right so it is quite important to remember that because you know every time we say something doesn't matter exactly what's the word but the energy that's embedded into it will make direct changes or consequences to you know whoever is absorbing those words or exposed to them so it's very important for us to think about that too my friends because particularly nowadays that we we, he, we hear this story but we forget that when we go out there and tweet something the the little characters that you're sending also have some energy on them right it's not only spoken words, right? Every time you reply to emails, but you don't stop and do the golden rule of sleeping over, right? You're angry and you reply to an email and you forget the golden rule of like, mm, I'll do it tomorrow. Then problem can come. And the reason why it comes, because even though it's just a combination of bytes that are on and off, the computer doesn't really understand any of that, Whoever's reading it will feel the consequences of your direct thought, right? That you're projecting on those uh, full of typo messages kind of thing, right? So be careful, right? Electronic media is not inert to the spiritual world. It's the same thing. So it doesn't matter where we're doing. Everything has a direct effect on uh, on a re consequence a result, right? It doesn't matter which type of media we're using, okay? So 
That's right. So yeah, we need to read them again. Oh yeah, it's, you know, I, I I now have not only physical copies of the book, I have electronic copies too. So yeah, so we do it all the time. That's great. Um, okay, my dear friends. So now we did a little review of the book. We looked at all the uh, um, a little bit of the story behind. We're gonna go uh, directly to the last chapter of the book. And we're going to go through the prayer itself, which is uh, an incredibly beautiful uh, prayer. And we'll go through it now, okay? And if you guys have any comments or questions, please feel free. Uh, I like to have uh, these discussions here, right? Just to um, make us think, right? A little bit more. All right. So chapter 20 is really the end of the journey, right? The end of the journey that of this particular book. And in this chapter, uh, Andrea Louise will visit uh, a very well-known, laudable institution that is located in the lower zones, right? And this is very similar to uh, what we saw, for example, uh, in the previous books that we read. Many of these institutions are going to be located very close to the surface. And the reason why? Because they're rescuing us and we are still very well connected and bound to the surface, right? And many of the spirits that are going to be uh, helped in the institution are, are little evolved spirits. They're not really incredibly evolved spirits. So these are spirits that still need a lot of things that are uh, uh, still connected to the physical world, right? So. Even the spiritual cities that we're, we have descriptions, they're still very physically related to our cities, right? So that's that's not a shock for them, right? They they would feel similar to um, to the their own current environment. In this particular place, that uh, was called Cipriana's home. That's the the name of the place. It's even more interesting. Because uh, the description that Andre Luis gives us is like an is, is enormous place that it looks like a big school university with buildings, with classes, with a relatively well organized space. Um, and this space uh, provides help and assistance to all different uh, uh, individuals you know, from all other places that will come to be rescued there, right? So what he describes, like literally word by word, is this. It seemed like a large center of an essentially earthly endeavor. So it looks like Earth, right? It looks like our own world. And mostly composed of little evolved spirits. But these little evolved spirits that he's talking about are also helping in welcoming uh, the spirits that are coming there uh, at the first place and also running the organization. Now, why is this important for us, right? This is something that we also implement in our society, and we should should certainly implement, is that we always have a chance to help someone. Even if we're, uh, we think we're at the dead end, we're like the bottom, we hit that bottom, and we can't do anything because we're so distraught and things are not good, we can always help. There's always someone that I can actually help. It doesn't matter which the situation I am. And this is a perfect example of that. So they're, they're, all the spirits are going through uh, a difficult time, but they can still help others that are in different, even worse conditions that they are, right? And that's what makes the space, this place special, right? Because everyone is uh, helping each other. Like, it doesn't matter which type of condition they are, okay? Very, very important, my friends. This is a good message for us. There's always a, a way for us to do something positive, right? Uh, so it is important, and that this is uh, words by uh, Dr. Luis now, it is an important school of readjustment of the soul, of self-examination and preparations for individuals of goodwill, right? So it is a school. So what we do in a school? Let's think about this. We learn, right? We learn. We have experiences, right? We share. We 
you know, we have lectures or not, but we're always learning some new perspectives and learning to do things, right? So that's what it is. So it is like a, a school. So it's a learning place, right? A place of self-examination. So it's a place that allows the spirits to understand who they are, right? That's what they're doing. And most important is a preparatory place for people with good so people for good to exercise their goodwill or to move forward with their goodwill right does that sound very much like a spirit center is that a coincidence no my friends remember that in the spiritual world the organizations that we see are quite similar to many of the organizations we see in our level, incarnated places. And obviously, we are learning from those experiences and we are implementing them here. So when we go to a spirit center, we think about a school, a hospital, a place of meditation and prayer, a place where we can learn and implement changes. We can learn and self-reflect and understand who we are and learn things so we can have the tools to prepare ourselves to exercise our goodwill, our good vibrations, our charity, help each other, help those who come to the Spirit Center that also need help. Sometimes they're far worse conditions than we are, right? So what are we describing here? It's like a very, very large institution that follows a similar uh, pattern or or standards that we, we normally see in, in the spirit set. And that's why Andrea Louise very wisely describes it as a place with a very earthly endeavor look to it, right? So that's that's what we are. There you go, my friend. So see, we have, uh, we're learning a lot of different things here in this little uh, small section of the, of the um, chapter here, okay? Now, so we know where we are, right? And uh, now Andrea Louise uh, will describe what, is that what I call the preparation for the prayer. Okay, and this is interesting because the prayer will be led by Cipriana. And then Cipriana is an elevated spirit who started this house, the spirit uh, Cipriana's home, um, with her own effort, right, with their own uh, energy, and sometimes, as Andrea Louise describes in the book, in a selfless way, giving away her a lot of things that she could be doing and, and experimenting in other places, she would go and use that, that, uh, that bonus, that extra energy to help those individuals uh, there in this place. And it took a while for her to get it going because obviously she had to train and help everyone so they could, people started to help each other. Now, as Andrea Louise describes, most of the place is taken care of by the, the spirits that were rescued there. So they were able to continue that process. But it is primarily created by Cipriana. So Cipriana is going to start now the prayer okay so the first thing she did is that she knelt down and looked toward heaven so she positioned herself in a position of prayer of uh, in a humble way accepting that situation and looking above as she's positioned herself to receive some help right and at that time there's an intense light that powered over her head. So she's looking above and she makes a connection. That connection she can is visible, right? The energy comes through her at that moment. And then from her chest, from her head and hands, there's emissions of divine energies. Um, and then started to be spread around the room. And Andrea Louise describes is that she is now a visible intermediary for all of them, right? That's so beautiful, my friend. So, see now she, because of her, you know, her position and and the way she's able to connect the above, she becomes an intermediary, right? So she can distribute that 
beautiful energy that's flowing from above, right? And, you know, we can do that a little bit too, right? All of us can, you know, when we go to the, to the spirit center, we have the passes, which are these transfusions of good energies, right? So we are serving as uh, some sort of intermediary, similar to what we've been describing here, where we can, uh, with the assistance of higher spirits, deliver that energy to the energy centers of each one of the patients that are waiting for us, right? We can always do that. So, see, prayer is important here for not where we talked about several aspects of prayer. Now we're mentioning another one where by uh, establishing this current, right? It's like a little electric current that allows us to connect. We can also serve in a way that intermediate help to many others, right? We can touch others, right? That can maybe sometimes cannot make that connection themselves, right? So it's very important, very, very, very important, okay? And this is a beautiful, beautiful book again, if you have a chance to read it, okay? Um, then this, and then there Luis continues, this splendid rays flowing down from the higher realms through her sublime personality reached us and we felt soothed by unspeakable gentleness, right? And I'm pretty sure this is something all of us experience, right? Because we can feel these energies and they're very, very soothing and gentle and positive, okay? And that's, again, very, very important, okay? So we think about it. We can be that person, right? We can do that, okay? Uh, and then Andrea Luis continue. I shed a river of tears as harmonious choir of hundreds of voices in perfect tune sang an unforgettable hymn of praise to the Supreme Father, so that's the creator, okay? Now... I've heard many people saying before, there's no place for for songs and things during prayer, during spiritual centers and things like that. I don't think that reading what we're describing here, I think you would start to understand. And I know, you know, even Carol and Vanessa, they, they sing for us, that's beautiful, you know? So we know that. So, and we, we hear here from Andrea Louise that, that's so important because there is a very important role for that too, right? Just think about it. Like, you know, when you put a very nice song in the background or if you're singing something, right? You can certainly help focus your energies, right? You can feel that vibration of the words that you're saying. Remember that the words, I just, we just talked about it, they carry the energy that you project, right? They help you focus, they change the vibration of your mind, right? So, yes, you can do it during the prayer, right? And Andrea Luis is describing here how amazing that experience was for him, right? Uh, so, it's that's one other option we have, right? To sing, right? Why not? Sing is always good. God always going to sing for you guys tomorrow again, okay? Um, and then after that, uh, they're going to start the prayer itself, okay? So, you guys are all ready? I think you guys are ready, okay? We're going to start with the prayer, okay? Let's do this. So, it starts like this, and I'll read for you, and then we're going to stop a little bit so we can do some a little bit of discussion in the middle, okay? If that's okay for you guys. So... It starts like this, Lord Jesus, constant inspiration on our pathways. As always, in your mercy, open the sublime doors of your immeasurable providence. Okay, so is a prayer, as, we, as I described here, um, I call this the prayer of Jesus, right? Because it is primarily directly talking to Jesus, okay? So constant inspiration in our pathways. You cannot summarize things better than this. 
right? Our pathway, so our pathway of our lives, pathway of our existence is multiple, and pathway to our pathway of evolution, moral evolution, right? Inspiration because Jesus, the highest spirit ever we had a contact with in this planet, right? So you cannot have a bare inspiration. And when asked, remember, Alan Kardec asked in the Spirit's book, so who should we look forward? Who should be our role model? The Spirits are clear, say, well, you have a very good one, Jesus Christ, right? So he is the real inspiration in our pathways, right? And then continues, giver of life, awaken our consciousness. Yes, my friends, we need to wake up. Wake up. That's the, really the message. And we've been talking about this. There is a moment in our existences that we will awaken. We will, our, this little flower is going to open up. It's going to blossom. This is springtime. Right? Look outside. Look all the flowers that are coming up. Right? The cycle of life. Yes. So this, this is the moment where we're asking for Jesus' help so we can awaken our consciousness. Yeah? We've been sleeping. We've been sleeping for hundreds and thousands of years. Right? And we've been moving steady, slowly and steady towards our pathway. Now, sometimes there are moments where we have to wake up really change, move forward, open your eyes, right? And we've been called to do that many, 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 many times, okay? So Saul one day helped someone, yes. That's correct, oh, that's that's so nice, Saul, that's right, yes. We're never, absolutely, so thank you for sharing, this is so nice that we're never alone. You're never, you're never, right? And you know, that happens to all of us. It happened with me too many times, right? How many times, you know, I have assisted many people coming through the spiritual center, either at the reception, either at the fraternal systems, or the mediumistic meetings, right? We're always trying our best to help. But how many times I needed someone just to give me a hug sometimes, right? When I come to Spirit Center and things are not easy, right? It happens to all of us. Sometimes only by looking at me and smiling it was enough, right, to make my day. Isn't that true? We have all that. How about the energy that we're receiving at that time? Isn't it beautiful? Remember the prayer here where the energy was formed from above and reaching everyone? Sometimes all we need is that just to feel that energy, right? And we can be that person. Isn't that amazing, my friends? Think about this, we can be that person, right? And doing th doing everything without expecting anything back, right? Because that's the beauty of it, right? And the good thing is that we know that we're receiving a lot more than what we're giving all the time, where all the balance is always tipped, right? And, and Jesus is so amazing, and God our Creator is so amazing because they know it and they still do it and take care of us all the time, right? That's very nice. Okay. So continuing here, awaken our consciousness, consciousness so that we may sow resurrection in the gloomy valleys of death. Ah, so talk about resurrection again here. Remember the story of Jesus, right? And the resurrection here means that yes, we're coming back to life, but what type of life? What is this talking about? Is finding myself in the pathway that will lead me to Jesus. That's the resurrection here. It's like, remember the Emmanuel, I told you the, the example of chapter 32 in Your Daily Bread, uh, uh, that, uh, you know, um, and, and uh, Emmanuel said that it uh, was car like carrying corpses, right? And and that's what you say. It's like awakening. Get rid of that negative energy that you're carrying around, right? It's not worth it. It's not helping you, right? Wake up. Dispenser of the highest good. Yes, he's dispenser of the highest good, 
right? Help us fight evil with weapons of the spirit. Prince of peace, do not leave us indifferent to the discord that lashes the hearts of our suffering companions. Why is it important here to talk about this, right? Because there is a big difference between, you know, uh, with, you can actually do something, right? So you can do something to help, or you can be indifferent to something that you could have done. And that's not good, right? Because being indifferent means that somehow this complacency that we have sometimes against things that can be changed or can be helped, it's a little, little negative point in our math. Remember that? That in the, in the math of your spiritual evolution, we got to keep adding positive things, right? And if we don't do something that we could have done, it's like we're taking a little mark off from our tests, right? It works like that. So help us not be different. We cannot, right? We have, we have to uh, uh, always exercise our free will and deliver the love, right? To fight evil with the spirit. That's what he's, she's saying here, okay? Uh, master of wisdom, drive far from us the fatigue we feel from the work that we must render. Right? That's good. So asking for help, right? So we can continue this journey. And the journey obviously is um, uh, the, the, the journey that we're, we're, we're talking about here. It is not an easy one. It requires a lot of work right it's not impossible right it's not sad or negative it just requires us to keep working and what she's asking here is for uh, take away the fatigue from doing what i'm supposed to do so next time you have a chance to do something positive you don't say well i'm so tired now right and i remember i'll give you one example i know saul shared one example i'm going to share one too okay so I remember one day, I was uh, I just left the Toronto Spirit Society. We had our fraternal lunch, and I had um, uh, two uh, packed little uh, carry bags full of uh, food, basically that I was taking for for my home, right? Um, and uh, and while I was driving back home, I saw a homeless man uh, asking for something in in in, in, in uh, the road. He was complete, he was at a place that no one would ever stop. He was like in the cross, like in the highway, a uh, very difficult place. And I looked at that and, uh, and I said, and I continued driving, right? I looked and said, well, you know. And then, like, you know, next traffic light I stopped and looked to my side. I was like, well, I have two meals here in my car. So I just had one, actually, you no, know, it's like three meals, you know. Uh, so I thought about it. And my mentor, my little friend, came to me, sipping my ear, my Marco. What were you talking about in the Toronto Spirit Society again? Oh, you're talking about sharing and doing all those beautiful things, right? That's what you're saying? Oh, Marco, were you actually were, were you actually talking about the fact that we actually have to take action and don't be indifferent and don't be feel tired about doing things? Like, is that what you're saying? I just I just want to say that basically, if that's what he said, right? Obviously, I did not feel I did not feel really good at that time. So I said, well, you know what? I'm going to drive all the way around and I'm going to meet this individual, and I did. So I found a parking spot and I walked all the way to him. I gave him the food, and I and I had a like a quick chat with the with with, with the man, and I said, you know, uh, would, you know, would you like something to eat? And then he said, yes, he was uh, hungry and all that, and um, and then he went briefly over his experience and then what he was going through, and uh, and uh, in the end, I, I left and I, I prayed for him, and I asked for support and just made sure that he had a place to go and he had so it was uh, relatively under control at that moment and i left right 
And, um, and I never thought about it because that's exactly what, uh, uh, what we're, we're praying here, right? So let render us, you know, let's get us away from the fatigue, you know, from doing what we have to do, right? That's what we have to do. We don't have to think about it. I'm still in a stage that I have to think a lot about it, right? Well, I'm working on it. Hope you guys will work with us, right? We'll work together on this, but I'm still working on it. But I at least I know now that a lot of these things I need, you know, we need to work hard for it, right? And I can share another brief example. Okay, now, you know, you guys got me going. Now. I'm going to talk about it a lot. So. Uh, there was another moment where um, the, uh, I was uh, on the train uh, one day and nothing happens by chance. Make a note of that there. Okay? Make a little note of that. Nothing happens by chance. So I was on the train going home, tired after work, right? And it was, only, it was a late train, so it was only a the train. And there's, there's another gentleman in the train. And he... Um, he was a little bit intoxicated and he wanted to talk and I didn't want to talk, right? And I did something really bad. I walked away, right? And I said, no, I'm leaving, you know, I don't want to talk. And I, and I, and I went, instead of leaving, actually, I went to another car, continued my journey, right? Completely ignored him now. Well, um, about five days later, I was now in the bus. Same thing, going back home, very late. Um, there were there was only uh, uh, there was two seats together in, in, in the bus, so I, I took the window seat, and then comes in a homeless man, severely intoxicated, uh, and sits by my side, right? And he wants to talk. Well, at that time, my little friend comes to my ear and said, "Well, Marco, I think you gotta have to talk now, right? Because you gave you I gave you one option, you said no." Right, so now I'm going to give you another option. So let's see what you're going to do now, because now you can't even leave, right? Because I was actually blocked by the individual. Anyway, so to make the story quite short, he was he was intoxicated. He was actually thinking about committing suicide. And during the one-hour journey in the bus, I did my most incredible fraternal assistance meeting ever we talked about life in the spiritual world family ties and he kept saying like he wanted to go back home right going back home after 30 or 40 minutes of the conversation realized me committing suicide right and i think i helped i don't know what happened afterwards but we certainly talked for an hour about not doing that, right? Um, anyways, so there you go. That's another way that we have to pray so we don't feel tired, we don't run away from it, right? We don't say no, right? Yeah, this is a little runner. Yes, I'm gonna share more stories, so don't worry, okay? So we're gonna talk about it now. So let's go back to the prayer before we run out of time and I'm halfway through the prayer. Vanessa is gonna give me a call, say, Marco, what are you doing? Right? I'm gonna do that. Okay. Um, so continuing here. So um, um, emissary of the divine love, do not grant us peace until we conquer the monsters of war and hatred, right? We have to do it, right? The monsters inside each one of us, that's what he's talking about here. As we cooperate with you in your August terrestrial endeavor, shepherd of immortal light, strengthen us so that we may never become intimidated by the anguish and despair of the darkness. Yes, my friends, we can never be intimidated by that. That is simply a manifestation of the lack of love, right? 
which means that the only problem is that we need to give more. We need to help because love will be there. Love is there. There's a little seed there. It's just like a little mask out by a lot of clouds, right? Don't be intimidated by that, right? Um, distributor of infinite wealth. Supply our hands with our, your in, unlimited resources so that we may be useful to all beings on the pathway who are still feeling a lack of your imperishable gifts, right? And what is this wealth here? Not money, right? It's not about money we're talking about here. The wealth of, what is Jesus again? Remember what he was doing here? He was teaching us love, right? He was the representation of it, right? So what was the wealth that he's giving to us? Is that right? He's giving us the wealth of knowing what love really is. Oh, look at that. So he's distributing that for free. It's not charging, right? It's not put on Amazon. Okay. He's really just giving us by his example. Okay. Angelic ambassador, do not abandon us to the desire for undue rest. Do we take vacations from being nice? I usually say, oh, I'm actually a nice guy, but I'm gonna take a vacation now. So next week, I'm gonna be a nice person again, right? Is that a deal? No, we can't do that, right? We can take vacation from work, right, Carol? Just take a little break, can refresh our minds, it's very helpful. But we're still spiritists, we can't not be it, right? Because we already know it. Aha, see, you start studying. Now that you know, now you gotta do it, right? It's your responsibility now, it's all responsibility. So let's ask Jesus for help. See, that's what we're doing here, right? Um, and make us your humble servant, wherever we may be messenger of the good tidings do not allow our ears to fall asleep to the chorus of tears of those who weep their help in the circles of suffering again remember the my story that i shared let us not don't let your ears be sleepy to those who need right because we are important we are very important in the fish we are co-creators we are responsible for the creation, so we need to work together always, right? We can't just fake it that we're sleeping so we don't listen to someone who needs help, right? That's what she's saying. Please allow us, help us not to do that. That's what he said. she's saying, right? Um, companion of eternity. Ah, he's a companion of eternity because all of us, right? All of us are eternal right bless our responsibilities and duties do not abandon us to our continued imperfection grant us beloved jesus the favor of serving you may the supreme lord of the universe glorify you forever and so be it so this particular prayer is really asking our master jesus for a lot of things that we need, right? Don't have sleepy ears, don't ignore others, give us energy, don't let us feel tired of doing the right good things, right? Let us conquer our own problems, help us first, so we can better help other people, right? And even though you're not perfect, you still have room to help others, right? So that's all the things we're talking about now. Right? So in this entire prayer, and you can read this again in the book, you realize that nothing that we're asking here, so there's the praise in the beginning, there's the asking, there's the thank you, right? So there's all the little parts of the prayer. But everything that we're asking here is support. So we're asking for, basically, it's like, what we're saying in this prayer is that I recognize my weaknesses, you know, but I know I can do better, and I know that I need help with this, that, this, and that, right? So if you want to translate this prayer into something, well, let's say we can't find these beautiful words and put them all together, great, I understand that, 
let's make it more let's make it something that we can do like on a daily basis so let's for let's just think about that statement so ask for things that are important or supportive of your journey right so help me give him the courage you know to deal with the challenges that i have the energy so i don't feel tired doing what i have to do so my ears and my eyes are not sleepy to everything that's around me that's needed me and i'm just ignoring it right because i have to go back home and watch tv at the end of the day right i can't stay a little bit late perhaps you know you know that's the kind of thing that we do right and it's just like with a couple experiences that i share that you know i actually i actually thank my 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 spirit my spirit guardian angel and my guardian angel and and, and everyone because they gave me a second chance right and that's what she's doing to you here listen thank you for the opportunity of serving you right that's what we need to say to jesus right it's not jesus help me you know help me help me help me help me, help me. no Thank you for the opportunity of serving. I think you need the energy to do so. Okay. Dear friends, thank you so much for being with me and all of us here united again, eliminated prayers. Uh, and we're going to be here tomorrow again. Carol is going to be talking about um, uh, another book now that we're going to be uh, discussing. So that's the last day. Uh, for um, uh, in the greater world, okay? So we're gonna be with her tomorrow and then next night I'll be here again, continue this uh, study of illuminated prayers. So let us all this moment, thank God for the opportunity, right? So we continue this journey of learning and sharing these experiences and implementing that in our lives, okay? Thank you everyone. For being with us today okay thank you sunshine thank you very much okay all of you guys that are here late with us you know going through this and everyone that's going to watch this afterwards thank you for taking this little break this little moment right so we can you know think about uh all the importance of all these topics thank you daisy very nice yeah I'll just this little pray hands for all of you okay there you go Thank you very much. Okay, God bless all.